Now, if you've considered buying a new set of irons in this last six months or so, the chances are one of these five that I'm about to test today will either probably come into the reckoning. You see, for me, the player's distance iron category is the most hotly contested in the marketplace right now. And oddly enough, the irons are generally hollow bodied. So today we're gonna look at the Mizuno 225. We're gonna look at the Ping i525. We've got the Gen 5 iron from PXG. We've got the Callaway Rogue Pro, and we've got the one that's kind of, I think, sat at the top of the tree maybe for the last few years, and that's the TaylorMade P790. But will that remain my opinion when we look at things like overall distance, spin, launch, all the parameters that you'd look at in terms of TrackMan, but then we'll talk about the sound and feel and how these things differ in those categories as well. And hopefully we'll come up with some kind of guide that might help you if you're considering buying one of these types of irons this year. Now, one thing is gonna be very, very prevalent in your decision-making process. I think it's gonna be the way these things look. And I don't just mean in terms of shelf appeal. At address, these clubs are all very different. Don't forget, this is the player's distance iron market, but they still do differ in terms of their top line. So again, really depends what you're looking for. The ping at one end you can see is by far the thinnest top line, by far the neatest profile overall sat at address. And then going to the other end of the spectrum, I would say that the Callaway product again sits quite bulky at address, it's a bit more uh, of a compact product in terms of heel to toe length, or at least visually it seems that way, but it has got a bit more of a game improvement style feel to it. And then the other three clubs I think are very, very difficult to separate. The P790, the 525, and the Gen 5, again, are all similar in terms of top line. I think the Gen 5 does a little bit better in terms of chamfering off that uh, top edge to give that visual appearance of perhaps being a little bit thinner. But the compactness, again, of the club is probably more swaying towards that P790 in terms of heel to toe. So there's a lot of variables in there, but they are very, very different at address. And I think that's going to be a big part of the decision making process when you're trying to separate just which one of these irons you personally prefer. Now, I did mention looks and yes, address we've just spoke about, but very, very briefly, I want to talk about how these five irons look in terms of shelf appeal and how they sit in your bag. And I've got to say, I personally feel that if you don't like one of these five irons, then, uh, well, I'd question your judgment because I think these are possibly five of the best looking irons on the market right now. I think that this category produces really good looking irons. So again, I wouldn't turn my nose up at any one of these sat in my bag. The question is, which would you prefer? Because yet again, that's gonna be a part of your decision when you choose one of these irons. Now, ultimately, it could be argued that many of you will choose just performance data to base your decision. I don't think that's the case with uh, most golfers. They want, they want the right looking iron, they want the right feeling iron, and then they want the best data to back that up, hopefully. So I'm gonna hit each of these irons and give you sort of my immediate feedback on how they sort of sound, feel, and look at address. This is the i525, looks really, really good at address. Minimal offset. Um, really compact head and looks effectively like, um, like a player's iron. But in amongst me talking, you might have picked up a bit of a crack in terms of sound. And I think they've really struggled uh, ping in this. Um, the sound is, is just, it sounds like a hollow iron and they haven't got it right, I'm afraid. I said this in the initial review, it's a real, thing that I'd play these down. It's a forged iron supposedly, and we know that's a kind of forged face. It just doesn't work for me in terms of sound and feel. So really, really good in terms of how compact it looks at address. We'll pick these up at random. We've now got the 225, which to me, um, come very close to putting these in the bag um, earlier on this year. So you should have known my opinion on these. Again, a little bit more offset, a little bit more in terms of the top line. In terms of how they look, they really tick the box for me, but not everybody. Let's see what they do in terms of sound and feel. Again, even with a bit of mat be be before ball, it's just a much softer sounding and feeling iron. They're just literally chalk and cheese, these two. They're hollow bodied irons, and yet for some reason, that's a cleaner strike, which hopefully you can pick up the audio. We never quite managed to do that but so, so different in terms of the sound and feel. 
and I suppose something that you would associate with a Mizuno. We've now got the Rogue uh, Pro ST. Um, this one is a more bulky top line, there's no doubt about it. It sort of sneaks its way into this category um, a little bit more offset and does border on that sort of uh, more of a game improvement type look to it. But how does it feel? Well, I've pulled the shot a little bit left, but uh, not relevant at this point in terms of um, its performance, more so the sound. But did you pick that up? That's better. Now again, this one kind of, I think they've done a really good job here. Um, I go back to my initial review. This price point is extremely low for this category and they've got a real good balance in terms of that sound and feel. It's by no means, you know, the, uh, the, the best iron I've ever played in terms of sound and feel, but they've got a good balance with it. There's tungsten packed into it. It's a good performing iron. Looks again, very, very good job, in my opinion, in terms of what Callaway have done. I've then got the PXG Gen 5. Now, I think, again, this is very much, um, as it always has been, very much a split divide in terms of how it looks in terms of the back end of the club. In terms of from above, it kind of sits nicely in this category in terms of that sort of medium top line. Heel to toe um, is a little bit longer than that of the P790, or it certainly visually looks it. But that address, nice and compact. How does it feel? Well, again, with a thin shot like that, we can't really pass much judgment so quickly move on and see if we can get a better strike. A bit more uh, of attack in that one. And again, it's just a, so, so different. Um, you really do start to see um, at this point, there are two irons, the 225 and the Gen 5, which sound and feel just totally different than the other two that we've tested so far. And then finally, uh, you move into the P790. Most of you will know kind of what this looks like. It's been around for a while. It's a real popular club and uh, every right to be, in my opinion, top line. Again, sits right in this category, what you'd expect. A little bit of mat again, similar to the uh, 225 strike, but again, really good sound. Um, still got that little bit of a ting. There's always been uh, a slight issue with the tailor made P790s. I think they've improved it each time they've put them out, but it's still got a little way to go to suggest. Yeah, you got that sound there. It's just got a little bit sharp for me still. They've definitely not got, once again, this is the one that's got the sort of forged face, but uh, it's a long way from being forged feel. But over the five irons, the three, the P790, the Gen 5 and the 225 for me are far superior in terms of sound and feel than the other two. And the one that really disappoints me, I've got to say, is that Ping i525. They've really got to do something to uh, soften those acoustics, for me at least anyway. Okay, so before we go any further and uh, look into some data, I wanna know from you, what have you got in the bag right now? Any, any of these five models is the interesting bit first and foremost, and uh, or have you tried them? What's your opinion? What's your sort of feedback and thoughts on some of these models? Because I think that's a bigger help to see those kind of comments in the uh, in the description down below than perhaps just the singular view of me. So get involved. Let me know what you think of these irons in any way, shape or form, if you've had the experience of them or if you've seen them in other the reviews, just give me some general feedback and help your fellow viewer uh, perhaps point them in the right direction. Right, so let's look at some performance data. I'm going to put these in some kind of uh, order in terms of fifth through to first, but you might see these differently in terms of what preference you have in terms of data, but I don't think you can really split this any other way. Um, so distance, first of all, the shortest iron was the Rogue, 167.2 uh, carry. In fourth place was the i525, 167.4. The 225, 167.5. Then in second place was the P790 at 173. And the Gen 5 was 173.9. Now, at this point of the test, I don't know, I don't recall the lofts of each of those irons. So it could well be that there's a little bit of difference in lofts that is relative to those distances. I'm not sure, but I'll put those up in front of you now so you've got some kind of uh, barometer to work those back. 
We then go on to the spin number, which is an important factor for a lot of you. And I'm going to point out that uh, we're hitting off a mat, which produces low spin, and we're also, I'm hitting the ball, which I produce low spin, if you watch the channel a lot. But in terms of the worst performing, unfortunately, it was the Rogue ST again, which was only 3,600 revs, which is arguably, yes, it's very, very low. Um, in fourth was the 225 at 4494 average spin. In third was the Gen 5 at 4564 spin. Second place was the i525 at 4658. And uh, the winner then was the P790 in terms of the highest spinning product, which is 4737. But in all, our, in, in, apart from the Rogue, those other four are very much in those four and a half to 5,000 revs of spin, which is often something I record in Trackman indoors on here. So I'd sort of take that little bit with a pinch of salt. The other last bit of thing, I'm gonna put the launch angles in front of you now. I'm not gonna rate those because that very much depends on kind of what ball flight you're looking for. But I will just put the descent angle again, and I'll rather me reel through them. You can just see each of those and where they finished in order of um, that land angle, if you like. And I think you've got to couple all those numbers together in terms of spin, launch, and descent angle, because arguably that's a key factor to getting the ball to stop uh, on greens with a seven iron in hand. So that's all data done. Like I said, I'm not going to form an opinion. I'm just going to give you the data and let you decide what you think on which was the perhaps best overall performing product in terms of the data that you've seen. Now, the other key factor is obviously price points. And uh, it's fair to say there's a significant difference from front to back, as you can see. I mean, it's, it's, it's a difficult one to justify, isn't it? Because... Um, at one end of the spectrum, we've got that uh, PXG release at 249 a club. And then you go back down the other end and you look at the price of the Rogue Pro ST and it's a far different outlay. So budget is massive. The thing is, what do I do in terms of rating clubs? Do we rate them based on their price points or do we rate them based on the sort of overall package of a performance and looks of a golf club? I think what I'll do again is I'll leave you to make that judgment because ultimately, that's you that's gonna make that decision is, do you wanna go down that lower end? I think you're definitely making sacrifices in choosing the Rogue Pro ST. Not a huge amount, but you are gonna make them. Or do you splash out and go to those top end clubs, which all the other four are still very, very expensive indeed. So the question is, what is my favorite hollow bodied iron in the marketplace right now? Well, the answer to that is it really doesn't matter because the only thing that matters is what is yours. All I've tried to do today is present you with five options and give you my opinion on what separates them, what makes them different to each other. And I think that's the key for me. A lot of people always talk about all product being the same and uh, I'm afraid that's not the case at all. Just in these five irons alone, and certainly playing them side by side and one after the other, it was very apparent just how different they are. The kind of thing at address is going to be for some people that they're going to have to, uh, if you like that thin top line, then I-525s all day long. The other four were perhaps similar, certainly three of them. The row was a little bit bulkier. And then you've got the sound and feel thing. For me, the Gen 5 wins that hands down. If you're looking about performance, then I think, you know, the kind of P790 did it really well across the board and just sits there with a real kind of like, uh, it, it's a safe bet if you like, looks really good as well. Um, so I think the, the best way I can put it is this. Right now, you've got some incredible irons to choose from. And don't get me wrong, there'll be plenty of people that comment that why haven't I included this, why haven't I included that, because we could go on forever. There are certainly two or three, maybe four more irons that fit into this category that, like I said, I'd have been hitting balls for uh, quite some time. So yes, there are other options out there. The point is it's just good that you've got plenty of options at plenty of price points as well to make your decision. Right, that's me done. Give me your feedback, like I said earlier, on the questions that I asked, and hit that like button, and uh, I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching.